Hello, my name is Nojin Ki. Most of you will know me from one of the largest life science courses that U of T has to offer, PSL 300. And hopefully most of you will remember um, that I'm very passionate about research and grad studies. But many of you may not know that I've actually done my PhD here at the Department of Physiology at the University of Toronto. So I have a unique perspective uh, on the department itself and its grad program. And I can tell you before we even begin um, what an amazing experience that was and at the Department of Physiology and the incredible support and the training that I've gotten from the department. So I love this so much to the point that um, I've decided to stay and I was fortunate to be a faculty member since 2009. So today I would like to present to you our Department of Physiology and the benefits of doing your research at the department. So let's start with defining what physiology is and its objectives. So as you can see from this diagram, this research in physiology has a huge breadth, a very wide scope. And physiology is the study of how the body works in health and disease at all levels, including molecular, cellular, tissue, organs, organ system, and whole organism. Well, there's a practical answer, and then there's a philosophical answer. Well, the practical answer is, is that physiology is necessary for being a medical practitioner or being a dentist. So it's a very good way of preparing oneself to go into that direction. I mean, whether or not you choose to do physiology in the end doesn't dictate whether you'll get into medical school, but if you are going to be a doctor, you should be an expert in physiology eventually. But the philosophical answer, that's more so of where my drive and passion is. Physiology, the study of human physiology, deals with how we're in the universe. Not why we're in the universe, but how we're able to exist. And that's what's so exciting about studying physiology. I'm able to see a person and think about them on an atomic, molecular, and cellular level and put it all together into a, a whole system. And as a physiologist, I think of things like a detective. I don't think linearly going from A to B, but A to G to F to E, maybe feedback on B, maybe feedback on A. So it's a very dynamic way to study, and it's not superficial. There's so much to add on to it. I love physiology for those reasons. I can get a sample of physics, of biochemistry, of organic chemistry, and put it all together with human biology and microbiology. So for that matter, the objectives of physiology really remain the same as 100 years ago. This is to really better understand both health and disease. What has, however, changed drastically over the years is the remarkable elaboration and increase in the sophistication of experimental tools that are available for the study of physiology. Thus, this physiology continues to be highly valuable and relevant specialty for most medical-based professions and really opens doors to many other professional venues and serves a broader basis for relevant physiology studies. So perhaps I think that these are the most exciting times for the study of physiology. So now let me introduce you to the Department of Physiology. First of all, when it comes to the departments, department size actually matters. The Department of Physiology is one of the largest and best funded physiology departments in North America. We have 124 faculty, 111 postdoctoral fellows, 187 graduate students, 15 staff, and we get a total external research funding of roughly $18 million a year based on 2008 and 2009. Department of Physiology is, a, is an important hub for translational research in the Faculty of Medicine because the department is very well integrated with many of the major hospital-based research institutes and benefits from close linkages with both basic science and clinical departments at University of Toronto. Our department also has a very rich history and a very strong reputation. The Department of Physiology is best known, as you guys well know, as the site of discovery of insulin, which was recognized by the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine Award, which by the way was Canada's first, to Banting and McLeod. The Department of Physiology also houses world-renowned faculty, world-class researchers, probably the very best in Canada, and world-renowned clinician scientists, broad range in research from cells to animals to humans. So let's talk about the research at physiology. 
When it comes to research of physiology, as you can see from this representation of this tree of knowledge, of all of the research that the Department of Physiology is actively involved in. The Department of Physiology is the largest basic science department within the Faculty of Medicine and conducts research in various areas. I'm just going to read you a few. That includes molecular basis of ion channel function, signaling pathways that calcium independently regulate resistance artery tones, epigenetic factors influencing neuronal function, including mechanisms of sleep, sedation, anesthesia. Also, the role of contaminants in marine mammals, their health, and impact on humans, and defining roles of G proteins and their regulators in cardiovascular systems, diabetes, and obesity, and the list goes on. Our department, the Department of Physiology, is organized into four separate platforms where the members of the department have organized themselves into four operational research groups that meet regularly to exchange information about research interests and to oversee research training programs. And these are neuroscience platform, cardiovascular platform, endocrine and diabetes platform, reproduction and development platform. So based on these platforms, the Department of Physiology also conducts research based on societal needs where physiology leads scientific discovery, propelling us to a higher understanding of health and disease. And these specific research societal needs include research in diabetes, epilepsy, Alzheimer's disease, chronic pain, heart attacks, and stroke, and obesity. So now let's hear from a recently admitted master's student why she has chosen to uh, study physiology and to, her, to do her grad studies in physiology. Um, I chose the Department of Physiology because I'm interested in uh, translational neuroscience research. Um, I'm an international student, and when I came to do my undergrad at U of T, I didn't know much about research. I, I just knew that I liked uh, to study the human body and understand the mechanisms of disease and uh, find therapeutics. And so I thought med school would be an ideal uh, profession for me, but then um, from my second year, I started doing research, and I really, really enjoyed that. I, although it, it was a big time investment, but I enjoyed every moment because it was intellectually stimulating, and I was always finding something new and, well, interesting. So um, by my fourth year, I decided that I wanted to do research. Uh, med school was <laughs> not uh, my primary choice anymore. So I, and I chose the Department of Physiology because um, coming into undergrad, I had a lot of exposure, specifically in research in neurophysiology. Um, and the reason I chose, I was a specialist in physiology, a major in biochem and a minor in psychology. And I, uh, and I chose physiology because I wanted to do um, research in neuroscience and wanted collaborations. And this department provides a lot of that opportunity. Um, I will start my master's this September. Right now, I'm, do, I'm working with um, Dr. Worcester um, in neurophysiology. And uh, what I realized from um, my experience there was that uh, it's not just the research or uh, data. It's also the friends you make and the collaborations because, um, I mean, Dr. Worcester is an excellent collaborator. And what I saw from her is that that integrated um, Research was was key um, to, I guess, discoveries, and uh, now I'm convinced that I want to do a PhD. So, in addition to all of this that the physiology department can offer, uh, we also have the pre prestigious awards and the grants. As I mentioned, the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, Canada's first to Banting and McLeod. But there is another story to this, where this year's prize, Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, was given to O'Keefe and Moser and Moser, but the actual original paper describing the play cells was published in 1971 by O'Keefe and Dostrovsky when Professor Dostrovsky was a graduate student at the department at the time and is currently a professor emeritus in the department. And so if you guys want to get a Nobel Prize, and who doesn't, then you might as well do your grad studies in physiology, because as far as I know, there is no Nobel Prize in, I won't mention name, uh, in the other departments, but we do have a Nobel Prize in physiology. 
So now let's move on to graduate training at physiology. So here I'd like to say that I'd like to say that if you're passionate about research, the Department of Physiology is looking for passionate students, not just academically strong, as we really look at the overall package. So I'm going to briefly mention admission requirements because I think that most of you are already aware of the different requirements and you can always go to our website, comprehensive web website, physiology.utoronto.ca and click on the grad programs and get more information. But very briefly, for the master's program, you need an appropriate bachelor's degree or its equivalent with a final year average of at least B plus from a recognized university with various courses such as biology, biochemistry, calculus, organic, and physical chemistry. Now, physical stream students from undergraduate programs in physics, mathematics, engineering, and other science, sciences are also encouraged to apply to the master's program. For the PhD program, students may be admitted via one of the following routes. You can have an appropriate master's degree or its equivalent with an average of at least B plus from a recognized university or through transfer from the master's program. Now, when it comes to finding a supervisor, because physiology is a broad subject, then you have, what you have to do is you have to first decide which aspect of physiology you wish to study. So you can do that by searching one of the research platforms that I've mentioned to you before in the Department of Physiology. Once again, you can find this information in our departmental comprehensive website, physiology.utoronto.ca, and you can study these fields carefully and read a review paper on each one that may attract your interest, and then you can finally email the professor where you should include your CV and the transcript. Lastly, the physiology grad program. Once again, you can find more detailed information from our website. You need a total of 1.5 full credit equivalent FCE in physiology courses, 0.5 FCE in physiology graduate only courses, 0.5 FCE with a choice of preferably a physiology graduate only course or physiology joint graduate, un, graduate undergraduate course. And you can also, you need to also attend and contribute to the department's seminar program, which is an important part of graduate education, and this is a requirement of the program. And you can present, and you need to present and defend a research thesis acceptable to the department, to the graduate department. And after 12 to 18 months in the master's program, you can do one of the following. You can write and defend a master's thesis and graduate. You can write and defend a thesis and go on to the PhD program, or you can transfer from the master's into the PhD program. Now more interestingly, why should you do your graduate studies at the Department of Physiology? Well, first of all, the Department of Physiology has world-renowned faculty. And this excellence of faculty is really demonstrated by their number one, high publication record. Number two, prestigious research and teaching awards, including several faculty who will hold Canada Research Chairs. Number three, involvement as journal editors, grant selection, panel members, and speakers at international symposia. And lastly, but not least, commitment to teaching. Our excellence of faculty is really demonstrated by their commitment to teaching and training physiology graduate students with a personal supervision. Also, the Department of Physiology has really the best research facilities, the state-of-the-art research facilities, including the Medical Science Building and its research in research institutes in nearby teaching hospitals, the University Health Network, the Hospital for Sick Children, Samuel Lunenfeld Tannenbaum Research Institute at the Mount Sinai Hospital, really offer the best research facilities. And this, there's outstanding opportunity to combine basic and clinical research through partnerships with most major hospital-based research institutes and many, and many basic science and clinical departments, including anesthesia, medicine, pediatrics, surgery, and so on. Also, graduate students in the Department of Physiology have the chance and the opportunity to attend international meetings to present their research. This was one of the meetings that I uh, attended as a graduate student. I think this is the Society for Neuroscience, and at the time, it had a membership of 35,000, and it was a fantastic experience for me. It was a fascinating experience um, to walk from one poster board to the other. It took like 15 minutes, um, and I've learned so much from presenting at international meetings, and I think you'll have the opportunity to do that as well. 
In addition, we have what's called GASP. This is the Graduate Association for Students in Physiology, which is an elected group of graduate students from the department, really to enhance the experience of students in the physiology graduate program, and to encourage interactions between graduate students with faculty members, where GASP provides input to the department, and the graduate students at the Department of Physiology are really encouraged to participate in the department's professional and social activities, and to take advantage of all the available resources within the department and the university. In addition, graduate students in the Department of Physiology, they contribute greatly to the intellectual environment of the department. For example, the annual Frontiers in Physiology Symposium, which is organized by graduate students, really provide an opportunity for both students and faculty to present recent research findings and their latest hypothesis. On top of that, you get the experience of teaching. Teaching is considered to be an important part of training in physiology, and whenever possible, graduate students are encouraged to demonstrate or teach in the physiology courses and labs. And we think that the teaching experience gained is very advantageous for your future careers. And lastly, I'm going to end with this slide, which is life after physiology. So this was a poll conducted from 2002-2010 uh, from students who have graduated with a master's degree in physiology. We have 78 respondents here. And as you can see, roughly a third, 36% of the students are either in medical school or practicing physicians. Another 14% in the PhD program. And there are several other venues where students have taken lab assistants, pharmaceuticals, genetics, professors, teachers, sales, and so on. What about our PhD graduates? Well, life after PhD in the Department of Physiology, once again from 2000 to 2010, 48% of them have gone on to do their postdoctoral fellows. 21% <clears throat> hold an academic position. By the way, one of that percent, I guess, is me. Practicing physicians, medical students, neurology residents, executive or senior management, and pharmaceuticals. So all in all, I think that life after graduate studies of physiology means a bright future ahead of you. So in summary, the Department of Physiology is large and diverse and offers excellent research training opportunities. And the collective expertise, the range of graduate courses that are available, and the importance attached to both research and training make the study in the Department of Physiology an exciting and rewarding experience. You get the opportunity to work with a team of world-renowned faculty, staff, and trainees whose combined expertise and commitment will drive scientific discoveries in the 21st century. And I'd like to end with this video, a video from Irene, one of our finest graduate students, uh, and she's going to talk about the benefits and the reasons why she chose to do her grad studies here at the University of Toronto. So I guess the question is, uh, why did I choose the Department of Physiology? Why did I want to do graduate studies here? Well, I chose it. It's a very simple answer. I chose it because I wanted to be involved in some cutting edge research and to work with the top scientists in their field. That was the reasoning. That was what I think the reason anybody picks a department. Um, there was some really exciting research going on in the department. And that's why I originally chose it. But what they didn't tell me is there's going to be so many other things that are so amazing about the Department of Physiology and worthwhile joining the department. And I'm going to tell you now <laughs> what those things are. So um, I joined the department because I knew that it's going to create, um, that there's a lot of collaboration going on between the department and hospitals. And there's a lot of translational research, which was that I was interested in. So I'm very interested in the brain. And the department does some really cutting edge work in things like chronic pain and sleep and learning and memory, which is the field that I chose. And it made sense to join a department that collaborates with hospitals because then every research question that we have is really informed by clinical settings and your results and your data could eventually influence patient outcome, which is what happened in my case. My project was very much inspired by a clinical problem uh, because my supervisor is a clinician scientist and my results later really influenced how um, this specific problem is tackled in a clinical setting. So that was an amazing opportunity. And I kind of knew that I was going to get this kind of training in the Department of Physiology. I um, mean, you know going in that it's going to be an incredible opportunity. Um, you're going to get the skills, like the analytical skills, the um, personal development skills that you need, communication skills. Um, 
it was expected, right? I mean, you know that when you're joining the graduate department of physiology, you're going to get that. What I didn't know is that there's a really supportive community here. So there's an amazing faculty that is really just interested in seeing you succeed. They're going to be hard on you. They're going to be fair. And there's a really great um, supportive system in terms of administrative assistance and graduate coordinators that make sure that if you need anything, you can come to them. And there's so many times that I rushed into their office with questions, and they were really helpful. Um, I was also really impressed by just the student body. So um, the community, I guess, and the environment that uh, is created here is really inspired by the students. That the department attracts. So what was really incredible is that the kind of students you're going to meet here are really motivated, really talented, really intelligent, and um, there's a lot of emphasis on that sort of socializing and interacting with your peers. There's a um, really great student association called GASP, and they organize a lot of really fun activities like skating and pub nights and things like that. And I really encourage anybody to go because you're going to meet people who share the interests that you have in science and that passion for science, and you're going to make some lifelong friendships. I mean, I know I did, and uh, that was definitely a highlight as well. So on top of the really amazing research and training you're going to get, the people you're going to meet are really going to influence you and change your life probably. Um, also, there's all of these experiences outside of the lab that nobody tells you about. So there's a lot of opportunities for teaching. And um, I've spent a lot of years now, <laughs> years, yeah, um, acting as a teaching assistant and a course coordinator in the department. Um, it really opened some doors for me professionally that I didn't anticipate. And it was a really worthwhile experience. And I really recommend that. Um, I also got a chance to travel. So there's conferences, both national and international, that uh, the department really helps and encourages you to participate in. Um, I also got a chance to go to England uh, for three months and work in another lab there. It was a really amazing opportunity. And um, I, I, I got to say, I, I wouldn't change it for, for anything. I don't think that you get a chance to do that in a lot of graduate programs, but you definitely do here. And I mean, really, um, the part that I value the most in, in, in all of this experience. On top of the training and on top of the environment and all that, it just, it prepares me, or I felt like this department really prepared me for whatever I wanted to do in the future. It doesn't matter if it's a research career or if I want to pursue professional programs or if I want to go into industry or government. I mean, I got the skill, the training, both professionally and personally, that I needed to uh, prepare me for the future. So that's why I chose the Department of Physiology. So for these reasons, I think that you should do your grad studies here at the Department of Physiology. Thank you for your time. At this point, I'd like to introduce Irene, a soon-to-be Dr. Irene, a PhD candidate, and she's going to, able, she's going to be able to answer some of, if you have any questions, um, on grad studies here at the Department of Physiology. Hi, everyone. I guess we're going to read some questions, and I'm going to answer them. Um, yes, any questions? So if we're applying for the Department of Physiology, when would be a good time to apply? Um, well, it really depends. So I can tell you my story. Um, ideally, you apply as early as possible. Uh, finding a supervisor is key. And um, I think um, being prepared and doing your homework before you start is probably the best way to go. I did it really late, and I applied last minute. And um, I actually applied for the summer uh, admissions, but you should definitely apply earlier, so closer to the uh, December deadline, which is probably best. Um, that being said, uh, if you find a supervisor that you really like and you're past the deadline, try anyways. There's always next time. And I know that my supervisor is always really impressed by a good cover letter and a solid CV. When you're really trying and you're showing that you're really excited and you're really interested, just email the supervisor you're interested in and chances are they'll at least meet with you or talk with you because people here are really great and they're excited by new students that care about the department. Along that line, are there any tips you can give for incoming students to find supervisors? Um, okay, well... I can say that there's different approaches. Um, the approach that I took, which I guess is the simplest one, I did my undergraduate degree in the Department of Physiology and Pharmacology, so I knew a lot of the uh, PIs coming in, and they've taught courses, um, and so I had a personal relationship with some of them. 
and I knew which ones um, I wanted to work with and the kind of research they do that I wanted to do. Um, if you're not from U of T, which I think is common, or you're not familiar with the professors, um, the best way to approach this is to go on PubMed. So you find a PI in the physiology department whose research uh, interests you, and then look at their publications, look at what they've done, see if the kind of techniques that they use in the lab is something you'd want to learn. Uh, see if the research topic really excites you uh, or you're really passionate about that. And then, of course, just email the PI. I mean, I know it's really intimidating, but just emailing them and maybe setting up a meeting, you'll be surprised how many of the professors you're going to meet love talking about the research, especially with newcomers, because there's still that excitement in your eyes. And I think that the, um, I know a lot of PIs who really enjoy that. So that would be what I would do. So when you're ready to start um, a new degree in the physiology department, do you get to pick your own topic? So that's actually a really excellent question. I think it really depends on the lab that you're joining. I know that for uh, me at least, uh, I chose the lab because I wanted to study learning and memory. Ironically, that's not what happened. I ended up uh, looking at uh, tranexamic acid and how it causes seizures. Um, and that wasn't my initial intention, but it worked out really well. So a lot of the times I think the supervisor will give you a project that they're working on or they're interested in, and your input is going to be really important down the line. I think it's kind of rare that you really get to design your own project right from the beginning as a master's student. But um, I was fortunate enough that um, I was given a broad question, like, well, we're seeing these seizures. Why do they occur in patients with these drugs? And I got a chance to really screen a lot of different types of receptors and come up and sort of mold my project as I progressed through the degree. Because um, I, had a really, I have a really awesome supervisor who allows me to do that and uh, who gives us enough sort of um, academic or scientific freedom to grow as scientists. But I think it really it really depends. And um, you really have to go and talk to the PI that you're interested in and see what kind of project they have in mind for you and uh, see if that's something you would want to do. Also kind of talk to the other students in the lab and uh, see if the supervisory style um, works for you because in some cases it's a really inflexible style. The PI has a project they really need you to work on and they're not going to let you um, go off tangents from that project while other PIs are really interested in your input and so um, you're going to see a little bit more flexibility there. So it really depends on what you want from your supervisor. What are some things that we can expect going into grad school from undergrad? Some changes in the lifestyle. Right, so that's actually a really good question. I think that the transition from uh, undergrad to graduate school is going to be a little bit jarring for anybody uh, because it's not quite work, but it's definitely not school anymore. And you have to be... Um, more willing to, or at least anticipate the fact that you're going to have to be at the lab every day. I know that it depends on the supervisor, but that commitment to showing up and doing your work every day. And you're not always going to have somebody, like, a, or not so much somebody, but you're not going to have a deadline like a test or an exam, and you're not going to be evaluated by those things anymore. It has to be really an internal motivation where you know that you're going to come in and you're going to do this experiment. Nobody's going to structure time for you. Um, a lot of the times you have to figure things out by yourself. Uh, and it, there's definitely not going to be, I guess, the sort of, oh, you got a 90, therefore you know everything and you did really great in that course. Um, you're going to have to work for many months, sometimes years, before you realize that the project succeeded or that um, you got the results that you wanted. And um, I think that's going to be really different in comparison to what you got from undergrad. Um, so what are some, what, what can we do if we have some problems with our projects or some disagreements with supervisors? Right, so that's also um, a really good question. I think that um, a lot of students get really discouraged right from the beginning if there's some sort of friction or difficulties with your supervisor, and I think that you shouldn't. Um, unlike uh, undergrad, where you pretty much just did your own thing and you studied for the exams and all that mattered was the mark, a lot of uh, a big part of graduate school is developing these kinds of professional relationships. And a lot of the times, you're going to have to work with people you don't necessarily get along with right away or that you don't have that sort of personal connection with. You just have to learn how to be professional about it and how to respect the person even if you disagree with them, even if you don't necessarily like them as a friend. And I think that if you're disagreeing 
uh, with your supervisor or you're having some friction, know that at the end of the day, it's really for the benefit of your own personal and professional actually development and for the benefit of the project. So the supervisor is really interested in seeing the project succeed and seeing you succeed. They're not being difficult on purpose. And once you take away a lot of that, I guess, emotional investment that we sometimes have and feel like you're being victimized here, um, most students realize that the supervisor really does have their best interests in heart and um, just better communication can really help resolve a lot of those things. In some cases, unfortunately, um, where you really do have some irreservable issues, it's always possible to change supervisor or change programs, but I really think it's sort of a last resort type thing. And there's a lot of much better venues and um, to address some of the more personal concerns that you might have with your supervisor, especially early on. Because you'll see as time progresses um, that there's always a reason for why they're being hard on you. And I find that the profs, or I guess the PIs, and my committee meeting who were the hardest on me um, made the biggest difference in making me into the kind of person I am now and to making me a better scientist. Like you want those hard questions. You want somebody to set really high standards for you. It means they believe in you. So I think that uh, that's something to consider. Two quick questions. The first is, do I have to identify a supervisor at the time of application to the master's program or before I apply to the master's program? And the second question is, and the second question is, are there any professional programs in the Department of Physiology? I'm not sure if you touched on or that was discussed before. Okay, so as far as I know, you can apply to the department before you choose a supervisor. Um, I do, however, recommend that you find a supervisor you like or at least talk to them before you apply to the department. I think it's kind of hard when you're already in the department, but all, there's no positions available. Sometimes even if the... To the masters. Yeah, yeah, to the masters. I think you can. I think you can apply to the department. You can, right? Yeah. As far as I know... Yes, but the way that I did it is I approached supervisors beforehand because there were specific supervisors I wanted to work with. I definitely recommend that approach because um, that way you don't get stuck in a lab you don't like and uh, also at the same time, I mean, you get to already create a personal relationship with a supervisor sort of showing that I was really interested in you specifically and I was interested in your research and look, I did all of my due diligence and emailed you and all that. So I think that's the better approach. Um, that's, yeah, that's, that's also what I did, but yeah. And in professional programs? Right, so as an after the, uh, you finish the um, your uh, work in the Department of Physiology or during, <laughs> uh, after you graduate? Oh, I mean like you offer the MSc and the PhD. Mm -hmm. Are there any other, and those are research-based programs, right? Uh, so are there any professional programs where they're course-based, no, no thesis. So as far as I know, no, um, I, I don't believe so. But um, if you're interested in professional programs afterwards, like I am trying to make clear, it's a really good preparation for it. Um, and also I think for students who I realize consider things like medical school and dentistry and all of that, I still recommend giving it a shot because from my own personal experience, I applied to the department originally because I wanted to just get a master's, get into medical school. I was really, you know, not exactly what you should do, but that was the original sort of mentality that I had. But after the first year, I was like, oh man, I actually am pretty good at this and I like this. Like This is way better than I thought it would be. I think research is not what you think it is. And I think the department really prove that, at least in my case, and many of my colleagues. You come in thinking, oh, it's going to be like those boring lab courses in undergrad. It's going to be horrible. It's not. It, there's a lot more independent work. And if you're kind of like me and you want to just go and think about the problem, um, then it would be a, it would be a perfect fit. Um, so in that case, I think I would still recommend the Department of Physiology. Go. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Good. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today, and I'm hoping that I've answered um, all of your questions. Um, and of course, don't, I guess, hesitate to contact any of us if you have any more questions. Um, all of our emails are available online, and uh, the website is very useful for any further questions you have. So thank you very much.